Ray Kawakuba was pretty hard to forget because she has that Edna Mode hairstyle going on. Sleep sharp and so fierce. She's one of the most important people I have covered so far because she takes me back to those 2016 days where people were rocking the striped t-shirt, the ripped black jeans with the high top sneakers from the Play Collection. I was picking up popularity. Uzi just dropped his Love is Rage tape. It was such a great time. Kids, now you guys have the world being on fire and COVID. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I'm just kidding. But Ray created a whole culture that randomly took streetwear by storm. To others, Ray is notably known for her women's wear avant-garde designs that captivated and blew your mind as soon as you laid eyes on them. Find out why she is known as the queen of dystopian couture and what makes her so iconic. Ray was born in Tokyo, Japan in 1942. The oldest of three siblings and the only daughter, Ray naturally stood out from the norm. She came from a very educated family growing up with her father being an administrator at the Keio University and her mother working as an English teacher who taught high school students. Her rebellion and desire to go against these storms started very early. In school, she would bunch her uniform socks down to her ankles as she never enjoyed the idea of being what the world wanted her to be. Her initial introduction to fashion was her mom making the clothes that she wore. Later in her late teens, although not formally trained, she began to study fine arts and literature at the university where her father worked. She graduated in 1964 and got a gig from the textile firm Asahi Kasi. Working in the advertising department, she would eventually branch off into styling after the company began collecting costumes and props for photo shoots. Now, if you are a stylist, then you know how frustrating it can be when you can't find that perfect outfit for your project. This was the case with Ray, so she just began designing her own clothing. Continuing her career as a stylist with the support and motivation from her colleagues, Ray steadily developed her designing and styling skills. As a self-taught designer in 1969 is when she would first start Comme des Garçons, a French phrase that translates to like boys. What's so funny about Ray is usually designers have these deep meanings behind their brand, but dope, not the case with Ray. She just liked how it sounded. The world did too, obviously. But she wanted to challenge the thin line between the masculine and the feminine. She described dressing in outfits that showed a lot of skin as unsexy and boring. She wanted to withdraw from the Western's idea of sexiness and began to sell her own designs under this label. Her first shop opened up in Aoyama district of Tokyo and by 1980 she had 150 stores bringing in revenue of $30 million per year. This will ultimately be the turning point for her career and her life. The name of Rei Kawakubo started to flood the streets and catch the attention of other people outside of her homeland. In 1981, Comme de Garçon would make its first debut in Paris Fashion Week. She was amongst other Japanese designers like Yoji Yamamoto, who she would go on to have a romantic relationship with. They both made powerful statements in Western society. Before grunge was a style of dress trend like it is today, it was very questionable back then by many. Ray's collection featured a full black palette of outside silhouettes and deconstructed looks. It was deemed the Hiroshima chic, as many journalists thought the clothing looked as if they were destroyed in an atomic bomb. But needless to say, they just did not understand the genius that they were witnessing. Ray was not affected by the comments, however. In fact, she was pleased to know that she was misunderstood and caused conflict amongst the bougie Parisian fashion goers. Ray would go on to showcase more of her designs in Paris Fashion Week all throughout the 80s. Eventually, Comme de Garçon would be deemed as anti-fashion and she would continue to push buttons through her distressed and disheveled clothing. This style of dress is so popular today, though. We can see it in the past as well, like with the Yeezy Fall collection in 2015 that could possibly be attributed to the Pioneer. Another controversial collection that Ray created was the Dress Meets Body, Body Meets Dress Spring Summer 1997 collection. This collection challenged a normal silhouette and featured padding on the shoulders, abdomen, back, and hips. It was famously known in the press as lumps and bumps. Although unconventional, critics could no longer ignore the creativity that was being presented and they began to take her more seriously as a designer. Ray didn't just design clothing. Her work was physical manifestations of artistry on a different scale. She would go on to launch Play by Comme des Garçons in 2002 that consisted of graphic t-shirts, knits, and accessories. The logo created by Polish artist Filip Pagowski was an unusual shaped heart with two eyes. Following its success, the Play line would collaborate with other notable brands such as A Bathing Ape and of course Converse. 
Her innovativeness can also be seen in her 2016 fall ready to wear collection. This collection was so beautiful guys that it could almost bring tears to your eyes. And you know what, I think I did cry when I seen it. <laughs> it features sculptural garments covered in roses, bonded together by damask and pastoral jacquard, palettes colors of red, pinks and blues, and silk floral brocade. Rihanna was spotted wearing one of the designs at the 2017 Met Gala and the pictures just don't do it justice. The amount of creativity that goes into just one piece is absolutely astonishing. Coin the fashion designer's fashion designer. Ray has inspired and created opportunities for others such as Junya Watanabe and Tao Kirihara. She's also the second living designer who has an exhibit at the Met Gala, which is named Art of the In-Between, displaying more than 150 couture creations from her debut collection in 1981 to her most recent autumn winter, the Future Silhouette Collection. In 2012, she is the recipient of the CFDA International Designer Award. Today, Kawakubo is no longer designing her own clothes. However, the work she has done over the years has been more than phenomenal. For me, Ray did exactly what fashion is all about, creating complete art out of fabric and bringing it to life. Her designs and brand were original, authentic, and outright genius. This is what makes Ray Kawakubo an iconic figure in fashion.